Well, welcome to day 31. I'm glad you're along on this journey again with me, growing in your faith and faithfulness, maturing every day so we might be more and more Christ-like in everything that we do, in every way that we live. Yesterday, we, we talked out of Acts chapter 20 about St. Paul's understanding of uh, the worthiness of, of life. Now, I know whenever we talk about life's purpose, people wonder, well, how do I get some of that? How do I figure out what God wants me to do? I want to bring you a story, kind of a negative story, if you will, out of out of 1 Kings chapter 19 of what's necessary for you to, to hear God's message for you. Elijah had been faithful and he had he had just come off the top of Mount Carmel. He had whooped up on the the prophets of Baal. If you remember, God had, had accepted his sacrifice and then all of those prophets of Baal were slaughtered at the hands of the king. And then finally, that, that great drought was broken as, as God's promise came true. And then Elijah, Elijah ran off because he was afraid. And, and, and he's hiding. And these words come to him from the Lord. Chapter 19, verse 9. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, put your prophets to death by the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, Go stand, stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, put your prophets to death by the sword. I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came. Go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael, king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Meholan, to succeed you as prophet. Yehu will put to death any who escape from the sword of, of Hazael, and Elisha will put to death any who escape from the sword of Yehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. Let me make the point clear and simple. Elijah was spending so much time worrying about his life, coming up with all the answers for God that he was failing to listen to God. He wanted a great fire or a wind or an earthquake to come and tell him what to do next. He wanted to confront God. And instead, God came in a whisper and said, what are you doing here? And when he came with every excuse, God said, listen, this is the job I have for you to do but you have to listen. I want you to do this, then that, then that, and that's the reason, I'll tell you the reason why. But then I want you to understand, you think you're all alone in this. I've got 7,000 like you. I've got bigger plans. I got bigger plans. I want to ask you this day, have you been telling God everything that you want him to do and not listening for the still quiet voice speaking your calling his will for you will you pray with me lord god keep us from coming up with all the answers and let us submit ourselves to your holy will let us ask O oh lord for your direction your compass in life and instead of of worrying about what what's going to happen with us O oh lord let us ask first what you would have us do trusting 
that what you call us to do, you will provide for us the ability to do. Strengthen us for the days yet to come, to come and pour out your Holy Spirit on us so that, that we might be not just your people, but we might show forth your glory. Use us first. Help us to be quiet so we can hear what you want us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's a part of maturing, not coming up with all of the answers, but waiting and listening and hearing what God is calling you to do. Until tomorrow, peace be with you.